Hello, everybody, and welcome to Turn the Page, Season 5, Book 5 of Dungeons and also Dragons, Endless <gasps> Quest, The Mad <gasps> Mages Academy, You Are the Rogue. <gasps> <laughs> There's so much going on. Dungeons there, and Dragons? Uh, An just, Endless Quest? Too complicated for me. Uh, I'm sorry. You know, you're trying to show I, the honestly... second game to your dad after Pong. <laughs> Rita, this is so so insanely familiar to me right now yeah. because uh the last game that my dad played was Crash Team Racing on the PS1 and that was after a large I amount mean, of haranguing from my sister and I. Sure. Uh, I wish that was the last game then, I've ever played. 100% dude, it's a great game. It's a great game. And then yesterday he turns to me and asks, how do I get Tales and Tactics? Oh. And I've got to walk this man through downloading Steam, through getting Tales sure. and Tactics, through what a roguelike and an auto battler are, but I'm entirely on board. It's, it's yeah. what a kind thing. It is. A, it's a kind thing. Uh, and also shout out, I mean, hey, why? Why? it's our podcast. We can plug a thing. Uh, yeah, shout out to Tales and Tactics. You want to say why it's relevant? Oh yeah, I did a bunch of writing and voice acting for that game. I wrote all the lines I voice acted in it, and I'm real proud of it. You should go and look at it. It's on Steam. It, that doesn't count as a, a sponsorship. It counts as a personal plug. Yeah, that's the thing. That's that's the fun thing. It's uh, is that insider trading? Absolutely, sure. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> SEC, take me to court. Take, take me, to, me court. to court. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, I'm Australian. You can't get me. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't want to know the exact definition of insider trading because uh, because then what if I've done it? I'm in so many businesses where it's possible. No, but it's because yeah. it's fun to just call things insider trading when it's, it seems vaguely wrong. <laughs> and it has to do with finances <laughs> i like the idea of talking back scene like behind the stage about something and then going oh this is a bit insider trading it's like what <laughs> well like they're trying to, they're saying it instead of inside baseball <laughs> yeah. uh it's a little there's a little bit of uh insider trading but you can actually take a shortcut on five if you you know right past the mcdonald's <laughs> Now, look, not to insider a trade too much, but I don't like that hat on you. <laughs> Lock him up for that, please. Uh, you cannot say that. You can't say that. Uh, it's the Mad My Mages apologies. Academy. Take me to court. Yeah! Uh, and we're a rogue! Again! And we're a rogue again. Uh, alas. Back it, on the rogue again. Back on the rogue again. Uh, our main at this point. I would say, mm -hmm. like, of the characters, I definitely felt the most attached to the character we were when we were the rogue last yep. i don't remember 100%. i don't remember the other characters being things really yeah like we were a rogue when wizard... we were a rogue when we were a fighter we could have been anything when we were a wizard we could have been anything we, surprisingly we, 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 we cast, cast a, magic we cast we cast a spell or two at a time oh. where we just as easily could have bashed them over the head with a stick you know mm -hmm. it was just like you, you knock somebody out, but this, but it was with glimmers, little glimmer <laughs> shimmers, little sparkles happen when you killed that man. It was, yeah, it was <laughs> with a knife. Yeah. They call it ice knife, but it's just a knife. <laughs> it's just a knife. <laughs> Get iced by my knife. That's why it's called ice knife. Anywho, this was quite a preamble to say it's the Mad Mages Academy. We are the rogue Dungeons and Dragons endless quest. This is the second to last book that we've uh, we've got, and mm -hmm. uh, you want a halt adventure? It just doesn't work as well. I got it. we're five in. It doesn't work as well. I, I like when it said beware. It makes it halt easier. adventurer. Ah! I have to read these words before you proceed. <laughs> just tell this me to shut up. It's fine. Not... It's but the, the halt. <laughs> I, the, 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 the adventurer. Are you an adventurer? I, not then really. Then I beg thee, halt. <laughs> I, I I sit in my office. Most of the time, I hardly. Oh, adventure. then you need not halts. <laughs> Only you. adventurers. The ironic uh, this, thing is, however, I will, I will interrupt you no more times. The ironic thing okay. is, by not being adventurer, uh, an adventurer, I have halted more. Uh, so hey, ah, uh, that's it's why options. you need not halt yes. or adventure. Got it. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I won't this, interrupt you more. 
is not a journey for those who prefer to sit back and let others make the tricky decisions. This is a journey for a leader, a true hero, an adventurer. One who is not afraid to risk perilous traps, face all powerful wizards, or steal well-protected artifacts. If this doesn't sound like you, turn back now and forget you even came this way. But if the whip of adventure has whet your appetite, then forward with you, my friend. And good luck. Uh, turn back now, and it, it's commanding us to turn back and for and forget. That's so good. Yep. Well, um, but I like the idea that you do. You right. You fully heed those instructions. You turn back. You forget, and then in your hands is a brand new book that you've never read. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> let's start on the first page. <laughs> yeah, it's like the infinite, uh, the infinite <laughs> hallways in. Um, okay. <laughs> in Grail Quest. Yeah, in Grail Quest. Um, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> that's how the book starts that's how the book starts <laughs> you're an idiot well you're a great thief okay now i'm gonna start reading the book you're an idiot well you're a great thief the kind of swashbuckling rogue bards might someday sing epic ballads about but recent evidence points to the fact that you may not be as sharp as even the knife in your belt fact number one You've agreed to steal something from the Mad Mage, Halaster. 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 One of the most dangerous wizards to ever darken the Sword Coast. Most thieves would have turned down the gig at first mention of Halaster's name, but you did not hesitate to accept your mission for even a second. Fact number two. Fact the second. The thing you agreed to steal was Halaster's spellbook. As powerful as the Mad Mage is, the theory goes his spellbook must be crammed to bursting with pages filled with notations and the secrets behind the most amazing spells. Fact the third. According to the person who hired you to steal the spellbook, it's safely hidden away in Dw Dwemercore? Sure, Dwemercore. Yeah. An academy the Mad Mage set up so that he could train the next generation of evil wizards to work for him. Fact the fourth. I hope that this is the whole book. <laughs> just the whole just book. a book of 99 facts <laughs> fact fact the 123rd <laughs> you make a decision on one page and, you one page and it says fact 140 you shouldn't have done that the yeah. end fact the fourth the mad mages academy is located on the ninth level of the massive massive dungeon known as under mountain which ripples through the mount Waterdeep all the way from the magical metropolis of Waterdeep that sits atop it down to the roots of the mountain itself. That's enough to convince you of being foolish for sure, if not outright stupid. Raps. <laughs> Still. But I thought I could do it, Rita! But I thought I could do it! Back to the fifth. You exist on Earth and not in the Underdark. <laughs> so, do, need I say more, foolish, foolish mortal? <laughs> Still, you took the job because you think that you might be able to pull it off. And if you do, you'll make yourself a legend throughout Waterdeep and beyond. You came up with a plan so crazy that it just might work. You decide to sneak your way into the Dwemer Corps by posing as a wizard who's interested in studying at Halister's Academy. Once you get through the door, you hope to find the spellbook, snatch it, and run off before anyone is the wiser. With luck, you'll be back in Waterdeep, rolling in gold and glory before the Mad Mage even knows his favorite spellbook has gone missing. So far, so good. You started at Waterdeep Inn, called the Yawning Portal, for the giant well in its basement that leads straight into the Undermountain. From there, you worked your way down to the legendar legendary dungeon's ninth level. How- wait, hold on. Is the book actually just gonna be- <laughs> This is wild how deep in we're going. It's just catching us up uh, so fast. In it, a way, I kind really of respect- is. I've I've slightly read ahead towards what our decision set is, and I'm I'm over the moon oh about how far we're going. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and now you find yourself standing aside the entrance to the Mad Mage's Academy. Uh, yes. Uh, you walk down the hallway until it opens into a large room with a high arched ceiling covered from one end to the other with bright mosaics. You squint up at the images: wand wielding wizards engaged in stunning magical duels. A withered, disembodied hand severed long ago from its owner is now floating before you in midair. Points to you as you enter the room and motions for you to stop. Not wanting to see what the hand might be able to do, you comply. A moment later, a man with a long mane of white hair and even longer and bushier white beard sweeps into the room. I'm Halister Blackcloak, master of Dwemacore. <laughs> he says. 
Welcome to my academy. What business might suit you here? You point up at the hand still floating in the middle of the room. What's the story behind that? Alistair chuckles to himself. That belonged to a wizard named Manshoon. He thought he was a much better duelist than it turned out was true. Now, answer my question. Why are you here? Isn't it obvious? You say with as much panache as you can muster. I'm a young wizard in training, and I'm here to apply for study at your academy. The mage narrows his eyes at you, madness dancing in his pupils. You don't look much like a wizard, whatever that means. Are you absolutely sure about that? Attack Halister on page nine. <laughs> 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 I skipped one. Charge into the school on page six. Attack on six. Attack Halister on page nine, or apply for school on page seventeen. I mean, I, I love I, that I, our first decision is that we can attack the, the, man, the man who has. I the love artifact. it so much it's so that good. I really want to do it. We can do it. It's going to kill like, us, so we, we might as well do it. We'll really. die. Absolutely. His whole thing is being ridiculously powerful and influential. And we are a person with a dagger? Mm-hmm. Let's, let's do it. Let's see how it goes. Page nine. Or did you get, get those written down? Yeah, 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 yeah. Page nine. As Halliser awaits your reply, you suddenly rethink your whole plan. Sure, it might seem like a good idea to worm your way to the academy by lying about your plans to study here, but a mage like Halister is sure to see through you sooner or later, right? Better if you just drop all the pretenses right now and take your best shot at the man. At least it's cleaner that way. You're gonna live or die here. Why bother with all the lying and the hiding and the scuttling about? Better to find out sooner rather than later <laughs> what your fate might be. Well, I, you know, it's like if I went out into traffic today yeah because i might as well find out if i'm going to die instead of live my life wild yep. wild logic well, i mean wild if i'm gonna logic. die of traffic it might as well be now <laughs> i will know for sure if i currently if i will die to traffic right now if i die to traffic right now that's the logic we're going on wild or so you think you draw your sword fast as a flash and put the blade to Halister's throat, but before the mage can react, you have him at your mercy. All it would take is a flick of your wrist and you'd have him bleeding to death on the floor. I'm here for your spell book. You tell the surprised man. Take me straight to it and you might yet survive this. Halister stares at you, his eyes wide in shock, and for a moment you think this new, faster plan of yours might go well. And then the man starts laughing. What are you supposed to make of this? Doesn't seem scared at all. When he gives you a pitiful shake of his head, you realize that you're the one in deep trouble. Still, you press the blade to his throat, just hard enough to draw a crimson line of blood across it. The shallow cut doesn't stop the man from laughing. I'd rather not kill you, but I won't hesitate if I have to. You say? You think you're the first fool to come here and try and rob Alistair? The man says. You're not even the first one this week. Unnerved, you grab the man by the hair on the back of his head and shove your blade into his throat. Expect him to fall over and die in your arms, but your sword doesn't even sink into his flesh. It slides off as if his skin were made of impervious armor. Halister, Halister disappears then, right before your eyes. You realize that you're no longer holding the head of a man that, but that of a red-furred fox. You look down to see that his exposed hands and feet are now fur-covered paws, and a long bushy tail snakes out of the rear of his robes. What in all the gods' names? You say as you leap backwards from the creature. I'm not even Halister. The monster says through rows of vicious teeth. He's too busy to be bothered running a school <laughs> like this. I'm a demon disguised as him. <laughs> oh my god. I think this is probably how most biz like businesses in America are actually run right now. I have a feeling. Yeah, can I speak to the manager? Yeah, I am actually businesses. the manager. I'm a demon disguised as them. <laughs> <laughs> can I speak to the manager? Blade to the throat. I'm actually a fox man. <laughs> <laughs> I, why do you need a fox man to run an Arby's? Ooh, it's a good point. But Gerald's busy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> He's on paternity leave. You wouldn't hold that against him, would you? <laughs> he doesn't trust the new recruits. Oh, boy. They've burnt the curly fries. Anyways, where was I? <laughs> fox, the, the fox uh, demon. Wait. Yes. You're terrified, but now you've gone too far to turn back now. I don't suppose we could have come to some sort of deal. The fox-faced demon laughs even harder than before. 
<laughs> There's nothing you could offer me that would make me possibly betray the real Halaster. In fact, let me make a suggestion for you. With that, he pulls something oily from a pocket in his wizardly robes and waves it in the, your direction as he chants a few words in a language that hurts your ears. Then, the world begins to seem fuzzier and simpler than you ever could remember. Through the cloud that settles over your brain, you hear demons speak. There are many monsters in this land less fortunate than an adventurer like you. Go as far into the Undermountain as you can and give one of them your sword for keeps. I, I was just trying to return this patty melt. I was just, you, they, the meat's clearly not cooked. It's, I... Go to the core of the earth and return it there, <laughs> wench. Okay. <laughs> you want to argue with the fox man, you tell him, you, to tell him that his suggestion seems unwise, but you can't muster the strength of will. Instead, you find yourself turning around and trudging away as you trundle into the darkness. Echoes of a demon's laughter chase you down the passageway, and you wonder if that'll be the last thing you hear. The moment you leave the academy behind, though, you realize you don't know how to get deeper into the Undermountain from here. The only option is to head upward toward, wait, towards Waterdeep, and on your way back upward, you spy a pack of goblins. You sneak up and throw your sword, <laughs> and throw your sword at them. Keep it! You shout at the startled monsters as you sprint away at top speed, before one of them has the idea to plant a blade in your back. The end? The end. We quit adventure the life of an adventure we get roasted we did survive somehow i know probably we get roasted by the regional fox manager of the arby's so bad that we quit the life of adventuring forever mm -hmm. we're not cut out for this life yeah what do we think should we charge into the school or apply into the school i feel like the most of the book is probably in the applying judging by that how fast we zip zap zooied here it feels mm. like the meat might be in the in the fake blending in or the blending in, et cetera, et cetera. Let's do that. Of course, I'm sure. You say? What young wizard wouldn't want to study under the legendary Halister Black Cloak? I consider it an honor that you didn't vaporize me the moment that I threshold <laughs> crossed the threshold into your school. Halister strokes his beard, amused. The day is still young. You laugh off the implied threats. And hope you don't sound as nervous as you are. So, what do I need to get started? You ask. Cast a spell. Kill a monster. Go on a quest. We don't bother with such things here. Alistair says. We simply administer a test to see if you're good material for our academy. You nod, hoping that you can somehow skip that part. As you don't know how you're going to be able to fake being an actual wizard, you're going to bluff your way through this? Though, it's so you cannot show an instant's hesitation. Oh, when do we get started? You ask. Halister waves, and the hand floating above him retreats to a distant corner of the room. I'm sure you've had a long journey and would like to freshen up. We've made sure to make your... Uh, we want to make sure, rather, you're rested and sharp before we administer the exam. You would not believe how many people fail after insisting they're absolutely fine to start right away. Uh, do yourself a favor and accept our hospitality. It's freely offered with no strings attached. The wizard's tone tells you that he won't allow you to say no. Despite how much you'd rather not get settled in, if you unpack your things, then you'll have to gather them up again before you leave, or just abandon them, which you'd rather not do. Despite that, you give him a grateful nod and gesture for him to lead the way into the school. If you insist, you say. Halister snorts and then turns to usher you back through the door via which he had entered. You emerge into a long hallway that leads straight off to the east. Another hallway spurs off to the south, but he leads you past that to take the next turn to the right, into a long hallway. <laughs> Great, thanks. Important world building. <laughs> this, this one is lined with three doors on either side and then comes to a dead end. This is laying it out like Grail Quest where we would actually have the choice to go into each one I, of those relevant hallways. But I, I, I have like to tell won't. you, I, I have played the opening of this campaign mm. uh, and I think this actually does map to the uh the literal mapping I believe of it. this academy uh because like with three doors we're about to read three doors on either side comes to a dead end uh that's the housing that's the dormitories mm -hmm. for the new applicants like we were housed there 
Which um, which module is this? Is it? It's not just called the Mad Mage. Mad Mage Academy. Academy. That's what it's called. Yeah, I know the other ones weren't yeah. weren't one to one. They weren't titled after the book, or the book wasn't titled. It, after I think it. it might be called like the Mountain of the Mad Mage or something like gotcha, that. The Mad gotcha, Mage. Gotcha. Uh, Hallister takes you halfway down the hall, then opens the door on the right and motions for you to enter the small room beyond. This hall features one of our two student dormitories. He tells you. Conveniently, this room is empty at the moment, so you can rest here. In fact, if you make it into the school, this room will be yours. Feel free to take as long as you'd like. I'm sure I'll be ready to go soon. You say as you slide past Hallister and into the room. It's a decent size and contains a bed, dresser, and chest along with a desk and chair. Everything you'd need for your studies. If you happen to be an actual wizard, an ever-burning torch flickers above the desk and a row of five tubes lines the wall nearest the door. Hallister notices you examining them. Those are part of our pneumatic tube messaging system. You put the notes in the proper tubes, and air elementals <laughs> carry them to where they're needed. The one labeled Headmaster's Office goes right to me. Once you're ready to get started, just let me know. Thank you for your hospitality. I've always wondered how those tube systems worked. Now I just know it's elementals. Air elementals, yeah. yeah. air elementals. There is uh, a uh, there is a bar in New Zealand that is converted from an old post office that had a pneumatic messaging system, oh. and they kept it in place so they can deliver burgers in tubes to your what table. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, just pray one doesn't get stuck and go rancid in the tubes, because then when we put one in and it dislodges it, I, here's your I burger. They oh have... God. <laughs> I, I believe in the, in the thing that I watched about it, uh, they mentioned that there is one repair person in town who knows how to repair it, and yeah. that is a common occurrence. <laughs> yeah, not surprising. <laughs> the, the, the absolute walk of shame when you when their their burger's stuck in a tube and you have to deliver them an actual burger like by hand. <laughs> it's, that's so sad no, to think about. No, this, no, this doesn't count. No, re refund me. I want it through the yeah, tube or not at all. They, they, they probably have some kind of thing. I'm like, but I came here for the tube. <laughs> Sorry, tube's broken today. Tube. Ice cream machine too. <laughs> the, the, the ice cream pneumatic tube. They don't even put in a in a, a tube or a dish. They just you just open up your mouth. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you for the hospitality. You say as you stifle a fake yawn. I suppose the trip here has. Hmm. Almost tired me out. Hallister laughs. <laughs> You're wise to take my advice, he says before bustling from the room and closing the door behind him. You hustle over to the thick door and put your ear up to it so you can listen to him leave. When you're confident that he's gone, you walk over to the bed and sit on it for a moment to contemplate your options. Hallister wasn't wrong. You are tired. You have a job to do. The question is, how should you do it? Should you take a nap and wait for him to return and ask after you, or... Should you take advantage of the fact that Hauser doesn't seem to be watching you right now, so you can wander about the academy without worrying about him looking over your shoulder? You stare at the door for a moment as you make up your mind. Wander around on page 26 or wait on page 28. I don't have a lot of confidence that he's not looking at us. Really? Well, that might be the case. Uh, would you would you like any additional information that I would have from having played this? Yeah, I feel like that provides an interesting extra element. That we there had seems yet. to be, there seems to be an expectation, at least in in the the uh, the way that we navigated through it. So it's possible that this is just an addition by my own DM. Uh, but there seems to be an implication that they expect new students to misbehave because how would an evil wizard act? Oh, that's kind of fun. Mm. That's kind of fun. Let's let's lean into it on let's twenty six. Go for a wander about. You can't just sit in this room waiting for Hallister to come fetch you. The longer you wait, the better chance someone has of uncovering you as a magicless fraud. You listen again to see if there's anyone moving in the hallway outside, believing yourself to be alone. You open the door and are shocked to find a squid-faced human standing there, stock still. Only its tentacles move, silently writhing at the bottom of its cephalo uh, cephalopod face, right where its mouth should be. I am the Mind Flayer Cephalosk. Cephalosk. A voice that isn't your own says in your head. I am a student here at Dwemacor. It takes you but a moment to recover from your surprise. You give the tall, pale-skinned creature a shallow bow in response. 
Good to meet you. I'm a pla- Your purpose here is self-evident. The Mind Flayer glances in both directions. Accompany me to my quarters so that we might speak in private. It doesn't seem worth it to point out that Cephalosk is speaking in a way... <laughs> <laughs> speaking in a way that's impossible to overhear. Or so you think. Instead, you follow the creature across the hallway to his own room. The room is a mirror image of your own, although it's clearly more lived in. There's a bed in one corner that has no pillow and an overflowing desk that's been jammed against the other wall. The walls are damp with no moist with moisture. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that is magic. <laughs> damp with no moisture. As slick as Cephalosk's skin, and they're lined with shelves of books and scrolls and jars filled with a thick, translucent liquid, in some of which float perfectly preserved brains. Those are for me. Cephalosk. <laughs> I'm, this is giving me like moving in with a college dorm mate for the first time. Mm -hmm. Those the, the are my are dibs on the brains. <laughs> those are my things. Don't touch my things. I've labeled my brain. You wash your dishes. I'll wash mine. Cephalosk points this at the tape brains. Will represent what part of the dormitory <laughs> is yours? I would watch that sitcom. I would watch that sitcom for sure. The original odd couple, a rogue pretending to be a wizard and a mind flayer. <laughs> uh, all right, Cephalos points at the brains. Everyone asks about them. Why are you studying them? You ask, curious. The mind flayer's facial tentacles quiver with silent laughter. No, I don't study them. I eat them. You do your best to suppress your revulsion at that mental image, but you're sure that you fail badly. They permit that here. They prefer me eating these preserved brains to dining on fresh ones, I'm sure. Turn to page 22. I suppose I'll have to agree with that. You say? It's best for the Academy. Cephalos stares at you with his unblinking black eyes, and you wonder if he's thinking about how your brain might taste. You clear your throat. <clears throat> so, why did you bring me here? The Mind Flayer closes the door to the room, and the place suddenly seems a lot smaller. You notice the stench now, and it smells like an underground sea. I need your help, and you need mine. How do you mean? You ask, suspicious. I have read your mind. You're here to steal Halister's spellbook. I can help you with that. You glance at the door, wondering if you should make a break for it. I don't know what you're talking about. Deny it out loud. Smart, but we both know the truth. Exasperated at having been found out so soon, you decide to be direct. <sighs> what do you want? There's another one who wishes to enroll at the school. His name's Spite Harrowdale, and he can't be allowed to <laughs> remain here. Why don't you take care of that yourself? Spite has a bodyguard with him at all times. A half-ogre brute named Dumara. She's incredibly strong and wary of me to the point that I can't get past her without causing a scene. Worse, both of their minds have proven impervious to my attempts to probe them, and if I can use my magic against them, it'll be obvious who took them out, and that I can't afford to have known. So, why me? You are a newcomer, a stranger, so Spite and Dumara won't be wary of you. They'll let you in close. I know, Halister, and by eliminating another student, you'll rise in his esteem and increase your chances of admittance to the school. You realize I don't actually want to attend classes here, right? The Mind Flayer chortles, sending his facial tentacles quaking. <laughs> of course. I forgot that you're soon to leave after you get what you're after. Even better, if you help me. I'll show you where Halister keeps his spellbook, and then assist in your escape. Refuse on 33, or play along for now on page 40. I like this. I like this, man. Absolutely! I mean, like, we- Everyone here, by virtue of being here, is either pretending to be an evil mage, or they are an evil mage. So, like, I'll backstab anyone for any reason. Let's I go! Mean, it's just like, we are perhaps- the most nefarious, as we don't even know magic at all. That's true. True evil. We lied. Uh, do you recall the alternate page? This one's 40. I didn't manage to get the second. 33. Excellent. Cephalosk creeps you out, and the thought of lining up the Mind Flayer's next couple of meals disturbs you. At least the creature won't be feeding on you. I sense your hesitation. It isn't unwarranted. 
But if it's in the thought of killing that's causing you to pause, then be assured I'd happily... I'd be happy whatever way you manage to get them away from the school. He pauses and watches you intently as you continue to consider his offer. All the more tempting now that you know you have options other than to murder the prospective student. I sense your decision. It's good to be working with you. Let's get started right away. The Mind Flayer opens the door to his room and ushers you into the hallway beyond. No time like the present. You say. You wipe your brow in relief. The room was somehow stifling and chilly at the same time, and you're glad to be free of it. Cephalosk points to a door up on the hallway. Up the hall- what? Up the that's, hallway. <laughs> that's Spite's room. You should start looking for him there. And where are you going to be? I'll remain in my room and await the result of your attempt to eliminate him. If you succeed, I'll aid you in your quest to find Halister's spellbook. You could help me first instead. You'd flee the first chance you had. Fine. You concede. Go hide in your room until I'm done. The Mind Flayer slips back into his room and silently closes the door behind him. You take a deep breath and then saunter casually over to the door that Cephalos pointed at. It's closed, but you can hear two people inside chatting. You knock on the door and a half-ogre, whose head scrapes against the top of the frame, opens it up. Yeah? She says in a low voice. I'm applying to be a student here. You say? I thought I should introduce myself to the others. Well, let them in! A voice says from behind Dumara, who makes a fine door all by herself. She moves aside grudgingly as you squeeze past her into the room beyond. It's the same size and shape as the room Halister puts you in. There's an additional oversized bed shoved into a corner, which makes things a bit tighter, and a roll-top desk stuffed between the beds. A boy just on the edge of adolescence bounds over from where he's been sitting, surrounded by books. Hi, I'm Spike, he says with a wild cheer. So glad to meet you. So you're here to register as a student too? Dumara grunts at the boy for his unbridled enthusiasm. You just nod at the kid. Maybe. I hear good things, of course, about the school. It's all right, <laughs> but there are sorts of other cool things here too. I can't wait to see them, says Spite. Like what? Halister's spell book, he says with unrestrained glee. It's a real legend around these parts. I mean, all wizards have spell books. <laughs> I have one of my own, and I'm sure you do too, but just imagine how many spells must be in an ancient and powerful wizard must have stuffed away in his spell book. <laughs> It'd be enough to fill a library. I hadn't thought of it that way. You admit? Well, I want to get my hands on it, even if only to flip through its pages a bit. Oh, can you help me? Spite looks up at you with hopeful eyes. And how would I do that? You can't believe your luck. If you can help Spite steal the spellbook, you can just turn around and swipe it from him. He keeps it in a secret room. It's very well guarded. To get to it, I need someone to distract Worm Riddle. She's the night hag who helps run the school. If you can do that for me, I'll do whatever I can to help get you into the school, and then we'll be best friends too! Damara looms over you while Spite awaits your reply. Try and convince Spite to leave on page 25, or work with Spite on 92. This is actually a tough choice. It is. I mean, I, do, I don't, I just, I don't imagine the, the kid is going to be as competent as the Mind Flayer. But at the same time, the it's, it's, kid, it's cool. He seems pretty happy and pretty chill about this. He also told us about the secret room. The Mind Flayer didn't say anything about the secret room. That's true. And also he said, I just want to look through, I'd be fine with looking through a couple pages. Yeah. I mean, so. admittedly, I do feel it would be hilarious if uh, the person who betrayed you was the kid and not the Mind Flayer, and it would be mm -hmm. wild if they were setting up for something like that. But I also kind of want to walk willingly into uh, that yeah. possibility, because, like... <laughs> I would fall into yeah, that dude. trap on purpose, yes. Yes. So and also, it's worth noting, there is a small possibility that if we really did want to later, it might give us the option, uh, you know, while we're distracting the hag, Hey, Spite's over there. Kick him out of the school. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So, yeah, 25 or 92 for working with Spite. Move all the way up to freaking 92, man. Hell yeah. Zoop. I'd be happy to help you out. You tell Spite. Going on a spellbook hunt sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, it'll be more than that, Spite says. Just think of the things we'll learn. But, oh, sorry. I'm not sure I have time for it right now. 
He gives Spite a reluctant shrug. I mean, I'm supposed to be waiting to take the school's entrance exam. Spite and Dumara look at each other and then break out laughing. <laughs> Don't worry, Dumara says in a booming voice. There is no entrance exam, Spite says with a grin. Alistair just waits for you to sneak out of your room and interact with the other students, which can be fatal. If you survive, you're in. That may be the craziest thing you've ever heard about any kind of school, but somehow you're not all that surprised. Oh, all right then. You say to Spite. I'm in. Excellent! Spite trundles out the door with Dumara in his wake. Off we go on a grand adventure! Spite says. Grand adventure! Echoes Dumara. Turn to page 60. You, Spite, and Dumara walk along the hallway and reach a room where the door is marked Headmaster's Office. Knock, please. You wonder if the spell book you're after might be in there, but Spite leads you straight past it. The door in the, to the room is ajar, and you pause just for a moment to peer through, and you see Halaster himself sitting at the desk scribbling something on a scroll with a long feathered quill. He pauses in his work for just a moment, and you hurry on before he looks up to see you. All right, here's the plan. Spite says as he leads you through a set of doors and then straight through a wall that gives you gives way in front of you as if it's not even there. I'm going to take you straight to Worm Riddle's private chambers. All you have to do is go in there, find her, and keep her occupied for a bit. You don't think Halister's going to stop you if you march into his office and try to take his book? Spite snorts. He has a spell book in his office, uh, but that's just a decoy. I'm after the real thing. He keeps that in a far more secret place. I feel like if we went with the Mind Flayer, we would have been notified where the dud was. I don't know. Mm. I just got that vibe. I just get that vibe. Mm -hmm. You walk right through another wall and find yourself in a wide hall. Hey. <laughs> At the end of it, you can see a ghostly figure that looks as if it's searching for something on the far wall. Ignore it! Spite says without breaking a stride. It's just another illusion. He leads you right up to the image, and the ghost doesn't notice you at all. She just continues examining the wall. Spite turns to the right and spreads his arms towards the set of doors. Okay, this is Worm Riddle's place. You keep her busy, and tomorrow and I will take care of the nurse. Okay? Good luck. The boy and his half-ogre friend hustle back down the hallway and disappear into the passageway on the left. Sneak after Spite on 73 or enter Worm Riddle's quarters on 68. I think, I think we're currently on the path where we, like, trust Spite until Spite <laughs> proves otherwise. Why does he have a giant ogre bodyguard? Why is his name Spite? Yeah, wait, I forgot. What, and what was his last name? Because it was also not good. <laughs> I don't recall his last name, unfortunately. It was also, it was, it was a similar level of, uh, of, of... Spite betray you. Yeah. <laughs> Spite be a bad guy. Um... Should we try and uh, follow the the path, the critical path of trusting Spite at the moment? Sure, you're six... 68 to enter the Worm yeah. Riddle's quarters and distract her. Yeah. As Spite scampers off, you decide to go along with his plan for now. Let him deal with the risks of robbing Halister himself. You can always steal... Hmm, steal the spellbook from the young wizard later. As you throw open the door to Worm Riddle's chamber, you plan to announce yourself loudly so that she can't possibly ignore you. You expect to see someone's living quarters beyond, or perhaps an office crammed full of books and papers. But instead, all you see is a wall of smoke or mist so thick and cloying that you could not peer beyond the doorway. This is the entrance to the Dark Souls boss. Once again. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Oddly, none of the befouled air seems to curl beyond the threshold of the chambers and spill into the hallway where you stand. Hello? You call tentatively. You wait a moment for an answer, but it doesn't come. The smoke trapped inside the room seems harmless, or at least not toxic, so you plunge in. Inside the swirling smoke, you can see just past the ends of your outstretched arms, but no further. You wander around, blindly reaching out with your fingers, hoping that this behavior keeps you from running into a trap or whatever. <laughs> or whatever kind of fire might be causing all the smoke. Fortunately, the smoke does not seem to make you cough, although your eyes do start to water. Worm Riddle? You finally say. I'm looking for someone named Worm Riddle. Are you here? Ulaski. A voice calls through the smoke. You're so excited to hear someone else's voice that you nearly charge straight in after the sound. But caution grabs you first and slows you down. I'm a new student here at the academy. You say? Well, at least I hope to be. And I thought that I should introduce myself to the people running the place. 
You spy the bright silhouette of an open doorway in front of you, and you steer your way towards it. Amen. Amen. The voice says, and you follow it through the doorway. Amazingly, the smoke stops at the threshold of this door as well. And as you enter, tiny bones crunch underneath your feet. As you enter, tiny bones crunch beneath your feet. <laughs> so, oops. <laughs> they cover the floor of the wide room from one side to another, and there's no way to avoid them. A large four post a large four-poster bed sits to your right as you enter. Mummified cats line the edges of the canopy that hangs over the filthy, moldy pillows and blankets. On the wall above the bed, a line of crudely made dolls sits on a shelf, one of them looking an awful lot like Spite. There's a young halfling with, a cur with curly black hair sweeping the room. She greets you with a wide and eager smile. Why, hello, new student! She says with, great, with a gentle curtsy. My name's Medley. What can I do for you? For you. Sorry, to you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> for you. <laughs> I'm looking for someone named Wormriddle. You say as you peer around the oddly furnished room. I've never met her before, but Spite Harrowdale suggested I introduce myself to her before I take the entrance exam for the school. Medley raises her eyebrows in surprise. He did, did he? That Spite is a tricky one he is. Uh, I suppose I shouldn't be surprised about that. Uh, not at all. Can you help me find her? You ask, suddenly uneasy. You're not sure if you're uneasy because of how oddly the halfling is looking at you, or because you're afraid that if you don't find Worm Riddle soon, the Night Hag will discover Spite's plot. And if that happens, the whole plan is shot. Why, I'd be delighted! Medley says as she leans her broom against the wall and dust gets the dust off her hands. Just follow me! She steps into the smoke-filled chamber again. You can't see her, but she's cackling loudly enough that you're sure that you can find her by the unsettling sound. Refuse Medley's offer on page 4, or follow Medley on page 49. Now I'm pretty confident we've been swindled. What? I'm, I'm, I'm getting my swindle senses uh, is tingling. Oh my god, there's a freaking turkey outside. What the hell? It's huge. Sorry, this has nothing to do with anything, but he's just a ginormous turkey outside my window. Hello. Hey, you, you don't think of that as an animal one would look outside that window to see. Yeah, you wouldn't, but we have a whole family of them that live kind of by here. I've never considered, until recently, I never considered a baby turkey, but <laughs> I've seen I... like 10 of them. It's wild how many turkeys are here. It's, oh my God. Are they adorable? Yes. Are they as adorable as I think? Absolutely. Hell yeah. Okay, back to the podcast. Mm. Actually, one second. I must, <laughs> I must write. <laughs> Protect my window from this turkey. I must protect my window from this turkey, and by that I mean I must put where to edit out the fact that I swore. Okay, there we go. Okay, back to the book for real. Where the heck were we? Uh, we were choosing whether or not to follow Medley's offer here. That is to uh, <laughs> just follow her into a smoke-filled chamber. Hmm. I think I just heard the turkey <laughs> gobble. I think I did too, yeah. I don't see it anymore. Okay, all right. Eagerly and podcast listeners can absolutely listen to that turkey. Absolutely derailing everything this turkey is. How dare you? It's go I don't see it anymore now. Okay. Uh, hmm. It'd be, it's kind of, it feels weird to be like, can you help us find this person also? Bye-bye. Mm, it oh. does. Let's, let's, yeah. let's maybe go for a follow. See what's going on here on 49 as we uh, fully trust everyone. Yeah, well, I mean, it's the thing is, like, we keep on going to a new person that we don't, like the new person is like okay maybe i don't trust the last person and you keep we i feel like we keep on going on a chain of distrust it's not that we trust everyone implicitly as much as i feel like we trust everyone and then we immediately are like oh wait a minute <laughs> mm -hmm. we have not been Surely we... duped yet <laughs> but i exactly. have a feeling they're all working on duping us <laughs> like i have a feeling mm -hmm. every one of the parties is working on duping us but anyway you pursue, you pursue Medley into the smoke, following her by the sound of her cackles. Right this way, she says. When you emerge from the smoke, you find yourself in a laboratory of horrors. Four humanoid bodies lie under stained and dirty sheets, and a fifth sits off the side in pieces with only a single leg fully stitched together. Other bodies in various states of dismemberment hang from hooks along the far wall, and as you gag on the stench and gape at the horror of it all, Medley slams the door behind you and shouts. Get him, my pretties! 
The creatures under the sheets rise and come at you, dead bodies torn apart and stitched back together into horrible mockeries of actual people. They have no weapons, but they look strong enough not to... not need to worry about such things. You draw your blade and leap the closest one, cutting, stabbing, slashing the best you can, while you might never have had the chance to prevail against so many creatures, much less medley, whoever she really is. At least, you go down fighting. As you breathe your last, you tell yourself that that'll have to be enough. The end. Yeah, we got betrayed eventually. I mean, it's, Fair enough. we probably get betrayed at the end of all of the paths that, like, have any kind of trust in them. But what was yeah, the other one? Legitimately. Uh, that would be four. That would be not trusting her and making our own way here in the smoke too. That doesn't seem particularly promising. I feel like we maybe have to go back further. I'm sorry. You say with a frown. I'm not comfortable wandering around Worm Riddle's quarters unannounced. Medley pokes her head back into the room, but just her head, so it looks like it's floating in midair out of the smoke. You already came this far, and you didn't seem that concerned about it when I barged into her main hall. She says. Did I do something wrong by that? Spike led me to believe it was uh, fine to go in. She gives you a suspicious stare. Do you always do what people tell you to? What people you've just met tell you? No comment. You peer into the smoke behind Medley's floating head. What would you like me to say? Uh, sorry, where did you say Worm Riddle is again? Didn't. She gives you a wicked smile, then her entire head changes, becoming much larger, older, and bluer. When her transformation is complete, she steps forward out of the smoke, revealing herself to be a night hag. No way! You immediately realize that you've been talking to Worm Riddle the entire time. I'm so sorry. You tell her as you back away. I didn't mean to bother you. Don't lie to me. She says with a vicious cackle. Her voice has echoes of medleys, but it's much lower and meaner, murderous even. That's exactly why you came here, or at least why Spite sent you here. Don't try to deny it. You give her a helpless shrug. There's really nothing you could say that might placate her. Hallister may like to let the applicants wander around the place, but I've warned him about this. You're lucky I don't skin you alive and make use of your best parts in my golem laboratory, says Worm Riddle. You don't like the way this is going and cast an eye around for a way out. With all the smoke filling the room, you suspect that you could easily make a run for it. I can see what you're thinking, the hag croons. And I assure you it'll do you no good. You've already made a big mistake by coming here uninvited. Don't be so stupid as to make another. The tone of her voice suggests that it really does not matter what you do now, you're done for. Logic says why not try for the door anyway, so you do. You drop to the floor where the smoke is at its thickest and scuttle for the exit as fast as you can, but you're not quick enough. A few mumbled words from Worm Riddle and your body goes stiff and lifts into the air but with the cover of the smoke. She grins down at you, cackling mani maniacally, and you know that you're not getting out of here alive. The end. Hell yeah. So, where is uh, Follow Spite? Follow Spite? To sneak after Spite would be 73. I do love when a character who's like nice and bright and chipper reveals themselves as evil and they have this evil turn as their voice is just like, now it's, now it's slightly deeper and a little bit raspier. It's like, hell yeah. Yeah, it's like me I... when we stop recording. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> like it's the voice you have immediately speaking after you wake up in the morning. It's like that's the version of them they're always rolling with when they're evil. Yeah, pretty much. Oh my. All right, this is never mind. No worm riddle. Dealing with worm mm. riddle. Se yes, yeah. Okay. The sneaking after after spite here. Dealing with worm riddle seems like a bad idea. If she were that easy to distract, spite would have had Dumara handle the task instead. Besides, you're not here to get into the school. You want that spell book. You pad down the hallway after Spite and Dumara moving as silently as you can, taking care to remain out of their sight. You follow them through a series of classrooms, and there's then a supply room guarded by a couple of spectators. Large floating eyeballs with four prehensile stalks at the end in smaller that end in smaller eyes. A sign on the shelves reads <clears throat> Don't remove supplies without Headmaster Black Coke's written. Black Cloak's written consent. The spectators watch you closely, but don't move against you as you leave. You find yourself in a long, bent hallway and follow it to the right until you come to a door. Beyond that's a large room, in the center of which is a well that, as far as you can tell, leads down to the next level of the Undermountain. On the other side, there is another hallway where you do hear Spite's footsteps. Stop. 
You peer around the corner and see both Spite and Dunara ducking into an alcove towards the end of the hole. A moment later, Dumaru emerges with Halister right behind her. The two of them head for a door at the end of the hall and disappear through it. Suspicious, you pad up to the door and listen for it to it for a moment. Clearly, that was not Halister you saw. Had to be Spite in disguise, but why would he have to masquerade as the headmaster? Is there something in the next room that would attack anyone who wasn't there with Halister? Should you disguise yourself as Halister too? You don't have the magic for that, but you're pretty handy uh, with the more mundane means of masquerade. But if you show up as Halister and Spite shows up as Halister, is that going to confuse things and cause problems instead? You're not sure what to do. You only know that Spite and Dumar are getting further away by the second. Dress up as Halister, 82. Don't even bother on 86. I mean, we are a rogue, so we, like, probably have proficiency with a disguise kit, you know, the you more mundane methods. The other rogue book, when we tried to disguise herself, it went so bad. Yeah, it's true. We had to go get a, 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 a wizard in the uh, the Gulch district to do it for us. Um, but maybe, I, I, maybe now. It does feel like they are saying, like, very clearly, if you aren't accompanied by Halister in this room, you will be killed. So I do it think does that seem don't that. go with a disguise will be death. Probably. Unless it's like, oh, we're with. And Spike yeah. can't break character. Or Ooh. But then he knows that we're not taking care of Worm Riddle, in which case he might like act differently. Also, let's actually entertain the possibility that it's been Halister the whole damn time, and that in is fact true. Spite is the disguise. <laughs> that could well be the that could well be the case. What do you think? What are you thinking? I feel like you got a. You want to go for a disguise on eighty-two? I I kind of do. I, honestly, my brain is like, I want to do both of these options. Which one will kill us? Uh, mm. But th th if I had to, I would say that like a, a rogue disguising themselves here seems appropriate. Yeah, let's do it. If Spite went to the trouble to look like Halister, then perhaps you should do the same. Fortunately, in the course of your career, you become a decent disguise artist in your own right. It's a lot easier to walk into a place in a mask than it is to climb through a window, after all. You dig through your pack and find a white wig and a beard <laughs> and slip them on. It's a good thing so many male wizards stick with that kind of look as they get older. The hair alone <laughs> won't be enough to fool anyone, though, so you don a mask to cover your skin to make you look a little bit more like Halister. Old and wizened by years. It takes longer than you like, but eventually you feel you've done the best you can. In the effort to catch up with Spite and Dumora, you bolt through the doors of the inner hall and discover another hall that turns to the right. You follow with a large, to a large square room with a statue of Halister standing in each corner. If the statues bear passable resemblance to Halister, then it seems your own efforts are at least not likely to embarrass you. Even if Halister's best friend were to discover you looking like this, you feel like you might be able to fool him, at least on a dark moonless night. You glance around, but you don't see Spite or Dumara anywhere. There's only one other way out of this room through a passage just to the right of the one which you've entered. Unless there's a secret exit somewhere else, that must be how they left. Hmm. So is the is it like the costume took too long that we don't get to see where they go? Is that the is that what mm. It's not that it's not yeah, good, suspect. it's just worry that you might have already lost the pair of them for good, you decide to chain chance the passageway, and you slink quietly as it winds up and off to the right. Moving faster, you turn a corner just in time to see Halister, spite in disguise for sure, follow Dumara through a door into a well-lit room. The door closes behind them, and you sidle up to them and wait. At least they haven't gotten entirely away from you, but chasing them straight into the room would only ensure that they catch you following them. Forcing yourself to be patient, you start to continue to 100, count to 100, to give them a moment to move on if they've stopped, if they're stopping there to become more engrossed in whatever it is they've found. Then you plan to peek through the door and see what's happening, hopefully without giving them a chance to spot you in the act. That's when you hear someone inside the room start to scream and your plans get tossed away. You consider waiting until the screaming stops, at which point you consider entering the room and maybe just pick through the mess and move on. But your curiosity gets the better of you. Turn to page 89. You throw open the door and see that the screams are coming from Spite, who's being pulled up into the air and slammed down onto the hard stone floor by an invisible force. It seems to be directed by a giant skull with blazing eyes set at the door at the far end of the room. Your first instinct is to charge in and attack the skull while it's busy with Spite, but before you can manage that, though, a rough-hewn statue of iron steps in front of the door and reaches out to slam it shut in front of your face. A large blue-skinned creature, who oddly shouts in Dumara's voice, smashes into the moving statue clawing at the metal thing with long and vicious black talons. Help us! 
Spite shouts as he sees you. You wonder for an instant if he thinks that you're the school's headmaster. But he shatters that by telling you, That's the worst disguise I've ever seen! How did you even get past the Yugoloths? You have no idea what Yugoloths are, but perhaps it's better that way. Right now, you have a decision to make. If you call for help, the whole caper's blown. If you don't, Spite might die, but maybe that's okay. Call for help, wait to see what happens, or save Spite. Hmm. A giant skull with blazing eyes set into the door on the far side of the room. Also, we know there's a bunch of illusions in the area. It's not. This probably is an illusion, though. Probably. I... Ugh, but what if it is? Let, let, let it trick us. Maybe 98, let try and save us. Spite. Let it try and trick us. Let's be good and then yeah. have the game, the game, the book say no. Let's do that. Let's let's be nice and have the game slap us for trying instead of the, the reverse. As foolish as it might be to stay, you just can't abandon Spite and tomorrow to die. If you run for help, there's no way to get back in time either. There has to be something you can do to save them here and now. On an impulse you hope to live you hope to live to regret, you slip into the room just before the metal monster slams the door shut behind you. Now you're trapped in there with the others, whether you like it or not. The monster comes straight for you, swinging a fist the size of a warhammer at your head. You dodge beneath and scramble out of the way as fast as you can. Dumora takes advantage of the monster's distraction and leaps onto its back, attempting to dismantle it. She tears at its shoulders, peeling plates off of their bared claws. She even manages to rip off an arm and tosses it aside to clatter across the dungeon's stone floor. The metal monster reaches back and grabs Dumara with its remaining arm. Pulling her over its shoulder, it smashes her to the ground and begins to pound. Spurred into action, you leap at the monster from behind and shove your blade between two metal plates that cover its back, rather than trying to stab it over and over again. Which would seem like a useless way to attack a beast with no flesh. Use the blade as a lever and start to pry pieces of the creature away from its body, wrestling part of, off its side and then finally managing to wrench away its head, which bounces away from you with a series of hollow clangs. This finally causes the creature to collapse into a pile of wreckage, but unfortunately it crumbles to pieces right on top of Dumara, who wasn't doing all that well to begin with. Save. Spite. Dumara says to you with her final breath. You spin around and dive towards the boy just as he's about to crash to the floor again. On your knees, you catch him and your arms cradle him there, giving him a chance to catch his breath. Rather than take the time to thank you, Spite scrambles out of your arms and casts a spell on the skull, one that he's been trying to complete the entire time the thing has been battering him about. The skull goes dark and slack, and Spite nearly falls over in relief. Turn to page 102. This uh, preteen has this power word kill or something like that. <laughs> I, yeah, seems kind of like it. No time to chat, Spite says. We need to get that door open before the skull powers up again. I'm on it, you say. You reach the door and see that it has nine separate locks. You examine them, hoping to pick the locks, but none of them even feature a keyhole. They're magically locked, you say. Each one of them requires a spell to open it. Step back, Spite says as he points his wand at the door. He then rattles off a series of spells, each of which produces a knocking sound so loud you wonder if Hallister might be able to hear it in his quarters. As the ninth spell sounds, you grab the door and haul it open. There's only a single desk and chair in the room beyond, both bare. Spite pushes past you and rips open the desk's single drawer. Found it! He crows with glee. As crazy it might sound, this all seems too easy to you. Halster wouldn't just let anyone pick up his spell book, right? But if you let Spite have it now, you might never be able to take it yourself. Let Spite have the book on page 18... Wait, correction. Let Spite have the book for now. Turn to page 108. Or grab the book yourself on 121. I think we're we're committed to our trust path at the moment. 118. Let him have the book. I mean, I guess so. At this, like we we've proven trustworthy for sure. Mm. Now you hold up your end of the bargain. We we we, the, 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 we saved your life. Yeah. Also, I feel like he's just gonna get blown up. I mean, tips being honest, <laughs> you decide to let Spite <laughs> test your suspicions for you as he reaches into the desk drawer to pick up the spell book. You step out of the room, just in case. It's mine! Spite says. Halster's precious spellbook, it's finally all mine! There's a loud woof inside the room that shakes the walls and knocks the door <laughs> off of one of its hinges. Despite being braced and ready, you still flinch at the noise. After waiting for a full five seconds, you peer around the broken door and into the room, where Spite is laying sprawled across the floor, the spellbook right in his hands, blood trickling from his nose and ears. As carefully as you can, you creep into the room, still on the lookout for traps. If the past few minutes have taught you anything, it's that Halister's incredibly protective of his valuables, and you don't want to wind up like Spite. Despite 
Checking the floor, walls, and ceiling for traps, you don't find anything suspicious. If you pick up the spell book, it might hurt you the way it did Spite. But, in your experience, such spell traps have to be reset first. It's probably safe to pick it up. Turn to page 114. You kneel next to Spite and gingerly take the spell book from his grasp. As you stuff it into a large pocket on the inside of your jacket for safekeeping, Spite's eyes fly open and he reaches out to grab you by the wrist. He tries to say something, but he just coughs instead. I'm sure someone will help you soon. You tell him? We made a lot of noise. Get, <coughs> Get out of here <coughs> before the skull comes back to life, you idiot. Spite wheezes. You leap up to your feet. Good luck, you say to him. I'm done for either way, he says. <laughs> I'd ask you to kill me on your way out <laughs> if it wouldn't take too long. Jesus. He has a point, and you don't have any desire to hurt him. <laughs> He's done enough of that to himself. You head for the door, racing past both Dumara and the broken remains of the metal monster that's scattered all over her. It's not fair. Spites calls as you leave him and the room behind. You can't help but agree with him about that, but you've had plenty of bad, bad luck in your life too. You're not about to argue when some good luck finally comes your way instead. Quick as you can, you creep back into the hallway, foots... Footsteps thunder towards you, so you duck into one of the niches and hunker down into the shadows. This way, Halister shouts after he passes you. The monster's going to be furious. You don't know what he means by that, but you're not going to stop him to ask. Once he and the others are gone, you head for the entrance of the academy. You make it there without incident and bid Dwer Dwamercore goodbye. Now to get back to Waterdeep and collect your fee. When word gets out on this, your legend will surely grow the end. Uncomplicated, good end. Well, look, yeah. kid died. But well, like, I mean... He like, wanted us to kill him. He was... You said, kill me. You might as well kill me. I'd ask you to kill me if it wouldn't take you too long. Like, that's... I mean, hey. Real he, did it to, he did it to himself. <laughs> like, he absolutely did. I Look, I wouldn't have done that to him in order to get the book, but if he did that to himself and then he's like, look, also don't heal me, don't bring my body anywhere, I would ask you to kill me if you had the time. Like, I feel like that's as much, uh, as much moral uh, <laughs> currency as we can cash in. Like, that's that's as good as it can get. I would say so. I, I it's I'd say in... The world of a school where everyone is evil, that yeah. is about the best I think we could expect. It's a pretty unabashed success, I would say. Mm -hmm. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I liked the characters. I liked the setting. I liked our character had like a little bit of actual flavor to them as well. I enjoyed this mm -hmm. one tons. I, I, maybe one of my maybe one of my favorites legitimately same as well i i'm so intrigued by all of the alternate paths that could possibly exist in this book because like that is definitely like an uncomplicated good ending but there has to be a version that you don't interact with like there were characters on other pages there's probably a second oh, story yeah. oh easy oh easily yeah for sure uh <gasps> But yeah. Also, it is lovely to be in a setting that I do slightly recognize because it, it felt like very vindicating afterwards when Spite's like, yeah, no, you have to leave the room. If you don't, <laughs> that's the that's the that's the entrance exam. Leave the room. Yeah, that that is nice though. I, I think it's a very evocative setting too. Like I just mm -hmm. I I liked it. I I play that module. I think oh. I, I think that's maybe what I'd say more than anything of all of these because they're all based on modules, right? I think ev I think yep. every one of every single one was of all yep. of the books so far. This is the module I would like to play the most. I I would say very very fair. Uh, but hey, oh. that's that's that. You wanna? Book. Hey, Rito, would you like to hear who the uh, executive producer of this I would episode? Love turn to pages. Nothing more. I've been waiting for it all week. Rita, would you believe if I, I told you. you that the executive producer of this episode, that is, of course, the person who's supporting over on uh, yeah. patreon.com slash turn to page cast at or above the hardcover tier, who was selected specifically for this episode as the person we feature, of course, much appreciation to each and every person supporting <laughs> through that or even non-monetary methods. But at the moment, we are here to feature the executive producer of Adams. Would you believe me if I said it was Adams? I would, I would. I, you, the more you spoke, the less confident I was that it, you saying the name Adams, who was, in theory, the wonderful producer for this episode. The more you spoke, the more it felt like 
you'd surely say something else after and therefore it is not the end and therefore it is not the correct person but i do believe you now in the fact that the person that is the producer for this episode today of course a wonderful thank you to all of our supporters on patreon.com slash turn page cast but the one for today is adams through and through i am glad to hear it it's important you believe that because it is the case great <laughs> thank you very much adams and again thank you uh for real Thank you, and thank you to everyone who is supporting on Turn to Page Cast. Uh, Patreon.com slash Turn to Page Cast. It makes a genuine, really big difference uh, in, you know, the quality of the show. Let's just get these books to do fun stuff. I've really enjoyed this season so far, and we would not mm. be doing this without the financial support on Patreon. So we can get the physical... I, I'm trying to flip pages to make the sound... The, the actual physical books that required... Thank you. Yeah, the actual physical books required in order to do this season come from mm -hmm. the Patreon support. So if you want us to continue to do things like this, Patreon support, very, very helpful, very appreciated. Uh, another thing you can do over on YouTube, youtube.com slash at turn to page cast. If you want to help by subscribing over there, if we get to a thousand subscribers, we can monetize that channel. And that is another way we can help support uh this podcast and via you know getting new books new art things like that mm -hmm. uh otherwise that's that if you have any suggestions for future seasons maybe not for the it might be a little bit late at this point for it to be considered for the next season but if you have any suggestions for ones that you would like to see that are both like not particularly long books and not particularly hard to find books uh mm -hmm. we would love those suggestions over at turn to page cast at gmail.com you can also leave them in the youtube comments but uh it'll be much easier to keep them all in one place if you send an email to turn to page cast at gmail.com but hey i guess that's that right let's gonna do it here for today sure, sure. thank you for listening we'll see you next time bye bye adios